Hello, it's Thursday, it's 3 p.m. in London, 10 a.m. Eastern. And wherever you are, it's almost certainly the top of the hour. That means we've got another 60 minutes of live DJ help with me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio. We do this every single week on a Thursday, or I say every week, we do have a break at summer and sometimes at Christmas, but you know, most of the time. On a Thursday, at this time, we are the biggest DJ school in the world. We're also the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the number one selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. We're the people behind the Digital DJ Tips website, also the YouTube channel, uh, and you're probably watching this on that, or you could be watching this on Facebook. In other words, we've got an awful lot of places where we teach, and of course we sell DJ courses, that's what we do. But every week on a Thursday we go live for an hour for free, for nothing, gratis, for uh, just for helping out because we like to help out and that's what it's all about. Uh, you can have a free copy of the book. That's another thing we give away every week. It's really easy. If you're not a member of Digital DJ Tips, uh, you can join Digital DJ Tips. All you've got to do is go to that URL. We'll give you a copy of the book. That's how much we want to share the knowledge that we've built up here over the years with you. So do come and become a member. Meanwhile, though, this is basically an hour where we've got no agenda planned. We've got this DJ controller here, the Pane DJ DDJ Rev 1. And the only reason in the world I put this particular DJ or DJ controller on here today was that our friends over at Deck Savers, who make these kind of uh, really cool plastic covers for DJ gear that are brilliant. They just don't break. I've seen people stamping on them and everything. Uh, have just announced that they've got them for the, the Rev 1 and the Rev 7, two very popular DJ controllers. So if you are someone who owns one of these and wants to buy a Deck Saver cover for them, then they are now available. Uh, we have no shares in Deck Saver. We're not affiliated with them. We just think they're a great company and we use their cases all the way through our careers. So I wanted to share that with you. So that's the only reason we got this set up. But it does give me a chance to say whatever your DJ gear please do ask you know we've got most stuff here in the studio over there there's the the, um, the warehouse space where we've got literally everything you could imagine but we've got stuff here as well we've got records we've got mixers we've got synthesizers keyboards we've got everything here so we could talk about whatever you want really so if there's anything you see around you that triggers you and makes you think yeah I want to talk about that or maybe you've been looking at the website and you've seen that we're talking about vinyl uh, with different ways of spinning with vinyl. We talked about this on Tuesday. We've now got a whole big article uh, on that over on the website. Uh, so maybe that's something that interests you. Uh, maybe you're interested in um, something else that we've covered recently and we're very busy over on the website. So we've got some software called Faking the Funk. We're talking about DJ setup, standalone versus laptop DJing. Uh, whatever it is, that you want to talk about, whether you've seen it on the website, whether you've seen it in our emails, or whether you've seen it just around me today here in the studio, or of course it's something that's really annoying you in your DJing and you want the pros to help you, just ask. That's what we're here for. Now, if you are new to this, you won't know that we don't actually present this from here. We present it from over there. We call this the comment cam. Hello, comment cam people. Uh, the reason we do this is because I can see all the comments really easily here live. Uh, and so if we do need to go back over there, we will. But this is where all the fun happens uh, when we are doing this stuff. So uh, hello to Mark, who's confirming it's actually 9 p.m. over there in Thailand. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Q people confirming what the time is everywhere you are. Uh, or indeed the weather. That's the other one that people tell us all the time. So apparently it's sunny and warm in Miami, says Papa D, one of my favorite places in the world. Hello to Kesha in Chicago, Catherine, uh, Kevin, Lars. Uh, you don't like my music in sexy Toronto. So there you go, what can you say to that? Hello Paul, good to see you. Uh, so basically, whatever it is you want help with, ask away. Do so on Facebook if you can, because it means that afterwards the questions remain underneath the Facebook post, uh, and it gives me a good chance to say, keep calm and ask once. If I see your question more than once, or if you get rude or pushy or capital lettery, uh, I'll just ignore it and my team will, will, will ban you from posting. So don't do it, just be polite, ask your question once, we will get to you when we can. This is from uh, Jermaine who says, is the Numark Mix Track Pro FX compatible with Traktor? I was just wondering for interest's sake. Thanks as always, great show. It is in theory, most MIDI controllers are compatible with most DJ software except Serato, which is licensed, so it doesn't work with everything. 
Um, and in theory it is. The problem with tractor has always been getting the jog wheels to perform nicely. So while you can go into tractor and map everything to the controls and the software and stuff, you might find you struggle with getting a really nice feel on the jog wheels. Always better to stick with the software that comes with your controller or with Virtual DJ, which is just great. It works with pretty much everything. They've cracked it, the Virtual DJ team, and made it work with, uh, with nearly everything. Uh, good luck in Thailand, Snakehead. I hope you enjoy yourself out there. Mark's already there, as we know. <laughs> Maybe you'll knock up Mark and say hello to him. Um, and uh, Mixmaster G says it's hot and sweaty in the Netherlands. So there we go. Um, this is from Brooke. It's a great question. I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer it. Brooke says, I've only got one arm and I'm struggling to scratch on my DDJ SB3. Any tips? So there are um, functions in software that can help you on modern DJ controllers. So the new Pioneer DJ. Now, which controller was it that had the scratch? It wasn't a controller. I'll show you what it was, actually. Let's just, let's just talk about the subject for interest's sake. Uh, it was this. It's the DJM S5. And the DJM S5 is a scratch mixer that's got a new function built into it, which basically does the crossfader for you in a number of patterns. So you can use your hand to do the other stuff. Uh, I remember which controller it was now. The Pioneer DJ DJ Flex 6 or FLX 6 has also got scratch patterns built in that don't need two hands to do it because you can do this bit and the other bit's done for you. The other thing you could look at would be the gate function. It's sometimes called something different. I'm pretty sure it's called gate or transform in Serato. And this function will automatically do the equivalent of the crossfader going like this, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, while the track's playing. And it's an effect that's been on DJ gear for a long time, but if you can trigger that, then that will give you the cutting in and out of the crossfader and allow you to do scratch patterns around that. It's a great question, so I hope you do um, find some inspiration in what I've just shared with you there. And of course, if anyone else wants to chip in with that, if anyone else uh, DJs with just the one hand and would like to help Jermaine, uh, Jermaine is over on the chat on YouTube today. Thanks very much for the question, Jermaine. And we've also got Roberto in South Africa as well. Um, I think you said you were in South Africa. Yeah, you did. You said you were in Cape Town. So there we go. Uh, so this is from Reza. Um, so far for private gigs, I haven't done more than a two speaker setup. Are there times when I'd actually use more than two speakers? Can you explain in what scenario you'd need more than two speakers? It's a great question about private gigs, about playing mobile, about playing weddings and parties and the kind of places where you take your own gear, right? So, the, you know, the classic DJ setup in those kind of places will be your gear in the middle and the speakers on either side of you, right? We've all seen that. And so there are other situations where you would want more speakers. If you've got a particularly big dance floor, then you can have speakers over, you can have a four speaker setup with two here and two at the other side of the dance floor, all pointing in, one on each corner, if you like. Also, if you're playing in a large venue that's separated with different areas and you're putting a big show one, you might want to tuck extra PA speakers in in different areas of the venue. And another time when you might want to use extra speakers is if you're playing a two room venue and you're expected to provide music in both rooms. So this does happen to mobile DJs. And so you might be asked to provide background music in the bar and different music in the main room. And some DJ controllers can actually do that for you. Some DJ controllers can allow you to play in two different places. This one here, the uh, the DJ707M from Roland. This has got a great feature on it where you can use the fourth channel as a different zone entirely. And then on the back of this controller, it's got a zone output, which is different from the output that you get for the main output. Where is it? I'll try and show you here. The zone output is this one here. It's got zone out written on it. And so your normal outputs are here and then you get this extra one. So you could plug this with a long cable or a wireless adapter all the way through to another room in the venue with your second set of speakers and have completely different music playing in there. So the other time you might take more than two speakers with you is if you want to set up your main PA system out there for the dance floor, but it's a little bit far away from where you are. And so 
it doesn't take very far for that sound to take long enough to reach you for there to be like a 25, 30 millisecond gap before it reaches your ears, which is enough to completely throw out your beat mixing because your headphones won't have that 20, 30 millisecond gap, but the sound you're hearing from your speakers over there will have. And so it, at the very least, it won't sound so good because you're not hearing the sound from a speaker that's really nice and close to you, but at the worst, it will throw your beat mixing out and it's really annoying. So in that instance, DJs often carry a third speaker. Here's an example of a third speaker, a Soundbox Go. Uh, so you'd have your main PA system set up and this one will be set up somewhere near you, pointing at you. And you're using it as a monitor speaker. And a monitor speaker or a booth speaker is designed in order to give you audio in your DJ booth or where you're monitoring the music so that you've got that nice, crisp, sharp, near field audio without that delay. And again, on the back of DJ gear, you get not on this, this has only got a master output because this, um, this is a consumer, like a big beginner entry level controller. But on the back of a mixer like this, you always have your main outputs, master, and your booth outputs. And they have separate volume controls on the top of the unit so that you can control the volume here for both of those master and booth levels there. So, there's a couple of scenarios when you might carry extra speakers with you to a gig. Okay, let's grab another, uh, lots and lots of weather coming in. Cloudy but no thunderstorms in Wales, says Craig. 2 a.m. in New Zealand, heat pump on because it's rather cold outside. Yeah, it's winter down there. We don't forget about you people. Uh, this is from DJ Helldeep. I've heard a successful DJ saying that you should not only play the best music, but it has to go up and down. I hope my English is good enough so you can understand what I'm saying. Yes, it's a good point that this successful DJ makes. If you play music, let's imagine my hand is the, the energy of the night, right? So you're starting here, the night's young, there's not many people in the venue, and you slowly build the music up and up and up to a level, and then you hold it there all night like that. In this section of the night, people are gonna get exhausted, they're gonna get tired, they're gonna get worn out. So once you've built people up, you're gonna to wanna to go like this. You're gonna to wanna to have peaks and troughs. You're gonna to wanna to have tension and release. You're gonna to wanna to have highs and lows. So that you can do a few things. You can give people a breather. You can allow different people to come onto the dance floor and the people who are dancing can go to the bar. You can rotate, that's called rotating the, the dance floor. And even on the way up, you know, people start to dance, they get a bit bored, go off the dance floor, you bring it down a bit. Then different people start to dance, get bored, you bring it down a bit. So even on the warm up, you're gonna to wanna to have these little peaks and troughs. They were like mini sets, there could be 10 minutes, there could be half an hour, but this idea of using them to change the dynamic, to have highs and lows in the night, to have different colors, different feels, different moods, is a pro DJ trick. I was listening to some uh, outtakes from our DJ Jazzy Jeff course. When we filmed our course with DJ Jazzy Jeff, we left the cameras rolling from Monday morning to Friday night and we filmed for the whole time. The actual lessons, there's about 80 lessons in that course, even if you added them all up, probably only added up to about a day it you know, probably only add up to about eight hours of, of, of content. And the other four days was preparing, debriefing, chatting about the lessons and all that stuff. But also sometimes Jeff would just start saying, you know what? And he'd go into solid gold, absolutely priceless information. And we had the cameras rolling for the whole thing. So I've spent a few weeks going through all of that footage this year, getting out all those little nuggets of information and putting them into a whole new module for our DJ Jazzy Jeff course. Actually, it launches next week, I think, uh, again, uh, with all that, new, all that new stuff added. So it's really exciting. But one of the things he was talking about was he was playing at a, an alumni party um, where the people were in their 40s, pushing their 50s, and he was playing a greatest hits of, you know, when they were young type set, an old school hip hop set I think he was playing. And Jeff said he turned up, everyone was super enthusiastic, the dance floor filled up quickly, he just really got lost in the music and he's playing away and he's playing away. About an hour into it, he looks up and he saw a packed dance floor of people who were at absolutely exhausted. They didn't want to leave the dance floor, but they were exhausted. And Jeff said, uh-oh, I've done my job wrong here. 
I should have given them the peaks and troughs. I should have given them the highs and lows. I should have stopped playing this and started playing a bit of that. So those other people who've never danced yet, because they couldn't get on the dance floor and this lot won't get off, they could have had a go as well. And, you know, these people are adults. They're not teenagers anymore. They haven't quite got the same energy as they used to have. It would have been far more polite of me to rotate that dance floor. And so, yes, it's a very good point that your pro DJ friend made there or the pro DJ that you were reading about made. Uh, and I totally agree. Um, so, yeah, try and rotate the dance floor a little bit. Um, you don't like my music, says I knew a one-armed jung jungle or drum and bass DJ back in the day. And he was mesmerizing to watch. So there we go. Um, how to connect my Novation Circuit Tracks and my MIDI controller to virtual DJs, says Mahmood. So Novation Circuit Tracks, I haven't got one here, but I have got something that's very similar. Um, little controller like this. We actually gave some Novation Circuit Tracks away recently. Uh, little, this is a, a drum machine stroke sampler. It's a bit like this. It lets you drop in beats, let you, lets you drop in synths and bass lines that you've written yourself over the top of your music. How to use it with Virtual DJ? Well, Virtual DJ is a DJ program. It gives you decks that you can mix with. This is a, an extra source. So really what you want to do is have a DJ mixer after Virtual DJ and after the unit here to mix them together. Now there's a few different kinds of mixers you can use. The type I would recommend, and I'm trying to find where we put it, here it is. Type I would recommend would be like this, just a little, they're called live mixers. Uh, these, this is a PV, but there's loads of brands out there. Yamaha do some good ones. And it lets you plug in your output from your DJ controller, from Virtual DJ, your output from something like this, maybe extra microphones and stuff, and mix them all together and send them off to the main PA. It's a trick that DJs have used all the way through the last few decades, especially mobile DJs that need to plug in extra microphones and backup sources and stuff like that. Um, but having a little mixer like this is a really good idea. So again, you'll plug your DJ controller into this, the output from your DJ controller into this, and the output from any stuff like this into it as well. Or if your DJ controller has got an auxiliary input, you might be able to get away with plugging something like that into the auxiliary input of your DJ controller. And that gives you the advantage of being able to monitor what's going on on this in your headphones by pressing the auxiliary monitor on your DJ mixer or controller. More expensive controllers have that, but otherwise, if you've just got a cheapo controller like this one here, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, plug the output from this into a little mixer like I just showed you, along with the output from your samplers and anything else you want to plug in, extra microphones or whatever, and mix it all together on that mini mixer. That'd be the way I would go about doing that. Right, let's go grab another question. We're live here today, people. If you're enjoying this, you want to be part of Digital DJ Tips, it's really easy. Uh, I'm leaning over to press the correct button now for you. Uh, head there, djtips.com slash join. You get a free copy of our book. Also, you get our weekly newsletter, Tuesday Tips, which will help you become a better DJ. What more can I say? It's easy to get involved. Um, so, Steve says, when you're comfortable with counting and timing, is it a bad habit to forget the counting altogether and focus on listening to the music to pick up on those phrase changes? It's not a bad habit at all. Um, the counting and timing bit is only to get you to the point where you don't have to count in time. So no, not a bad habit at all there. Um, it's a great thing to be able to do to get to that stage where you don't have to worry about uh, this kind of thing. So no, good on you. Good to hear that you are feeling like you're at that stage. Uh, this is from um, a Facebook group member. I've got a DDJ 800. Apparently, it's DVS ready. Do I have to get time code vinyls or the whole interface package? It isn't DVS ready because you can't plug two record decks into it from the best of my knowledge. I'm sure someone will correct me if you can't. You'd need the DDJ 1000 to do that. So put that from your mind, I'm afraid. Um, so Mixmaster G is chatting about the Mixon. In fact, a few of you are chatting about, about the new Redo Mixon controller. It does look good, but uh, as Mixmaster G correctly points out, it's only in... Um, it's only in demo at the moment. It's only in prototype form. It doesn't actually exist in anything other than prototype form. I'm just actually dialing up Digital DJ Tips website uh, in the background here so I can show you this controller that we're talking about because it does look really, really good. Uh, it's called a Mixon uh, 8 Pro uh, and it is a controller that works with Serato but also works with Algorithms DJ Pro AI software. 
and has got some pretty nice high-end features on it. It's quite an expensive device, but it's a solid metal build. Uh, it's got standalone mixer capability and stuff like that. So it is quite nice. You can read more about it over on the Digital DJ Tips website, uh, which I'm zooming in and out of rather aimlessly there. I have to be completely honest with you about that. <laughs> right, okay. Um, I'm still looking for ways to listen to Spotify and my old music when I'm out walking. Uh, my own music when I'm out walking. I believe the Mighty Vibe is too expensive. Uh, any more help for my DJ listening? Uh, I'm afraid, Craig, I think you've probably uh, exhausted your possibilities here. Spotify is designed to be listened to on a phone uh, or, or a computer. And if you don't want to take your phone with you and you, you find the, the little hardware device is too expensive, don't think you're going to find anything cheaper or more suited. Uh, I use my smartwatch not this one because it hasn't got music on it but i do have a, a garmin that will allow me to upload spotify stuff to it but it's much more expensive than the other solutions we've been talking about i admire your tenacity craig because you've been plugging away at this one for quite a long time but i do think you've probably reached the end of the uh, the end of the road there with uh, with trying to figure that one out um these things these solutions do cost money um, and that's why people love using their phones for all this stuff, because their phones can do so much. Um, talking about four speaker setups, Waylon says, I did a four speaker setup uh, at a long haul. I put two speakers at the front, two in the middle, all four pointing towards the back. It enabled me to keep the music at a conversational volume. This was for ballroom and sequence dancing. Really good point. You know, the more speakers you've got, the less loud any of them have to be to get the volume right across the whole dance floor. So thank you for sharing that. Um, this is from um, someone on our Facebook group. Uh, I'm planning to get the Prime Go and go totally wireless using XLR transmitters. Is there a substantial delay? If you're going to use the kind of transmitters that we have tested recently, which are these, they're the SCAR Pro Dillinger Labs transmitters, um, there is a delay. It's about 19 milliseconds, and it's just about noticeable. You can still DJ with it, but it is noticeable. Other brands of wireless XLR transmitters are available and if you're new to this idea the point is that you put one of these into the output of your DJ unit and another one uh, into the input on your speakers and it means you don't have to run long speaker cables they've got batteries in um, which will last for several hours so that's the idea of those um, so yes there is a little bit of uh, delay on them um, which surprised me actually I thought they kind of got it to the point where you wouldn't notice it but you did notice it uh, this is from um, someone else on our Facebook group. I'll tell you about the Facebook group in a minute, actually. Uh, I'm glad to have made a live transmission for once. I don't normally make these because I've got to pick my kids up. Um, I have a DDJ 800, um, and I could, in principle, use an XDJ 700 or similar to break out a third channel. I know the 800 is two channel, but four channels can be layered. Yes, so can you plug in a, a control deck in order to control a third channel on your unit. I think the issue you've got there is you don't have a third channel to plug the output from that deck into. You've got an auxiliary input, but it's not uh, it's not particularly designed for that. So uh, the jury's out on that one. This person, and I can't see your name because you're on our Facebook group, uh, is in our Facebook um, Global DJ Network group. So if you're in Global DJ Network and you know a little bit more about that, maybe you could share, or wherever you are, uh, maybe you could share anyway. Um, and I'll just read it out. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about, um, about Global DJ Network. Global DJ Network is an awesome place to hang out because it's a private group by DJs for DJs. And in this group, you get to talk about all the stuff you wouldn't really want to talk about in public about your DJ. And you get to ask questions, whether they might be silly questions or you know, serious or boring. You, look, there we are, live at the moment. Uh, or rather, that was from seven seconds into the broadcast. Um, uh, this is a place where you can basically learn DJing in a supportive community where you're not going to get trolled and you're not going to get kicked down and you're not going to get all the horrible abuse you get online. The reason for that is that the 12,000 people in Global DJ Network have all been personally admitted to Global DJ, DJ Network by us here at Digital DJ Tips. There is not a person in here who we haven't said, yep, come and join. And we kick people out if they don't stick to the politeness rules and the rules about us all being together trying to better our DJ. So it's a great place to be. If you'd like to come and join Global DJ Network, just go to 
the Facebook uh, homepage and type Global DJ Network into the search bar and you'll find the group and just apply to join. You don't need to buy any courses from us. It doesn't cost any money. We don't ask anything in return, but we do bring you in personally. Uh, and that means it might take a few days for us to get around to admitting you, but come and join. It's a great place to hang out. Um, let's grab one or two more questions then from the live um, the live chat. Uh, a few videos ago, says Michael, uh, you mentioned that RCA to TRS cables uh, was a bad idea. I was wondering why, from my own understanding. Well, it's not so much a bad idea, it just doesn't get you the benefits of the TRS cables, assuming that they are balanced. So this is something I'll try and explain easily or, or, or simply. There are two types of cables you can use in your DJ. There are unbalanced and balanced. An unbalanced cable has got two wires in it. It carries the, the signal and that's it. A balanced cable has got a third one which is used to kind of shield. Imagine it literally as like turning noise cancelling on on a pair of headphones. It makes the outside world quieter. It cocoons the audio in those first two cables. And that means you get better quality, especially if the cables are long and you pick up less buzz and less hum and less background noise. Now, RCA cables are the little blue and, sorry, the little red and white cables that you see on all mixers, little cables that plug into the red and white sockets on the back. Uh, they are unbalanced. The balance cables are the bigger ones that look like a, an old-fashioned big headphone cable or even the even bigger ones that look like a big plug. Uh, they have got the third wire in them. Now, if you convert from unbalanced to balanced, RCA to TRS or, or to XLR, yes, it could work and it, you can get the sound through, but you don't get that shielding. So, you, you, in other words, the whole cable defaults to being unbalanced. So that is um, a little bit more of an explanation as to why those cables uh, are not the best idea if you if you are wanting to run a long cable and use the shielding that you get with RCAs and TRS. Uh, this is such a big question, and I promise you, if anyone ever pulls this off, they're going to sell loads of them. It's from Gary. Will we see a four-channel standalone motorized rotor in four platters anytime soon? You know, a standalone motorized platter DJ controller with two, or DJ system with two, platters would be fantastic. Four? I don't think we're going to see it because it'd be too big, but I'd love to see a, a motorized two-channel standalone controller. I think a lot of those will sell. Um, what is the best free online way to learn DJing? This website, digitaldjtips.com, uh, is an absolutely fantastic place to hang out and learn DJing. Um, uh, but also, uh, YouTube, anything on YouTube. Uh, we've got a massive YouTube channel. There's other big DJ YouTube channels that you can learn from. Um, it's whether you want to spend the time to dig about for what you want or whether you just want to be shown in order by someone who can then help you if you need extra help. And that's what you pay for with courses. But there's an awful lot of free stuff out there. As I say, Digital DJ Tips uh, has got a huge free learning resource on our website. If you head over to Digital DJ Tips and take a look at the top of the page, there's a tutorials section. Now in here you will find literally thousands of tutorials uh, on all kinds of things going back many, many, many years, going back over a decade. Uh, it's a great place to go and learn. Uh, but not only that, we've got reviews, all the equipment you might be considering. We've got searchable reviews, so you don't just go in there not knowing what you're looking for. You can go in there and say, I know it's a DJ controller I want. Uh, I know it's got to be for Serato. Uh, I've got a Mac and I honestly haven't got more than uh, about $350. So I want to see everything up to that price range. And there you go. So it's a really easy way without us charging you any money for the privilege of basically learning fast. So go take a look at the Digital DJ Tips website. There's no other DJ website comes close when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, let's then grab another live question. Uh, when you take the tempo down in a trough, I always make sure that the slower track is a beauty of a tune that people respond to with excitement. The tempo might be low, but not the feel. This is talking about this idea of dropping the energy. Funnily enough, I was teaching a lesson um, in our Digital DJ Lab subscription program a little bit earlier today, and I was saying the same thing. There's a difference between tracks which uh, fill dance floors and tracks that are high energy. They don't, they're not the same thing. They don't have to be the same thing. If you've got a half empty dance floor, then playing something that people know and that's groovy and that's got a nice feel to it um, that is lower tempo will generally work better than something with high energy and high tempo because you're asking, you're asking for too big a switch between a half empty, half uninterested dance floor and like craziness. So much better to play something that's got the 
it's got the uh, people can relate to it they understand it they know the song uh, and it's welcoming and it's got a nice melody and a good groovy bass line um, in other words you can drop the tempo and still play a beauty of a tune as Benji really nicely puts it there uh, thank you very much for that Benji uh, this is from Ramesh uh, I've picked up the habit says Ramesh of mixing both tracks in my headphones instead of one ear on the headphone and one on the speaker is this a bad habit to practice because all the DJs I've seen have done the latter no it's a great habit to practice because it means you don't need to have monitor speakers so there's nothing wrong with that at all uh, in our DJs um, Jazzy Jeff uses the monitor speakers and the headphones and James Hype and Laidback Luke, just to name two off um, the top of my head, don't do that. They use in -ear, they use in-ear monitors and they do it all in the headphones. And Angelo doesn't even use headphones because he practices a lot of his sets. Well, most of the time he doesn't use headphones. Um, so yeah, Ramesh, whatever works for you. There's no there's no right and wrong there at all. Um, this is um, a live question from Sono Distorto on Twitch. Hello, Twitch family. Um, it's about a Zone 96 mixer cutting off during sets. Um, I think that will be a one-off issue with Zone 96. is a fantastic, fantastic mixer. I don't think there's any systemic problem with the Zone 92s there. Hello, Nicolaus. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, I'm thinking of buying monitor speakers for my Prime 2. Is there any latency? No, anything you plug in to your speakers, uh, to any, any speakers you plug into your DJ controller that are called monitors or studio monitors or DJ monitors will be absolutely fine. It's only when you're moving on to Bluetooth speakers, even if you, even if you plug a Bluetooth speaker in to your DJ gear, quite often you still get latency because they've got digital signal processes in them which mess up the audio. So uh, it's definitely worth researching that, but no, any speaker that's sold as a monitor speaker will be absolutely fine. Um, so let's now, so lots of you just giving a thumbs up here to, uh, to uh, Ramesh, which is nice to see about the mixing. Um, why is the Pioneer DJ DDJ 800 out of stock everywhere. Well, you could ask the same for many, many DJ controllers. There are global supply issues with anything that has got uh, chips in it. It's got silicon chips in it, and that's just the way it is. Uh, you're right, positive T916, 19 milliseconds is just enough to notice. It is. You can just about DJ like it. It's not a game changer. It doesn't end. It's not a deal breaker. It doesn't end everything, but you can notice it. Well, I can notice it anyway. Um, right. What's the best budget loudspeaker for mobile DJ? This depends on whether you're talking about a speaker to play out on or a speaker to rehearse on at home. I'm assuming because you say mobile DJ, you mean a speaker to play out on. There's no such thing as a budget speaker. You get what you pay for and you can't change the laws of physics, which state the bigger the speaker, the louder it's likely to be. A better way of looking at it is to say, how many people am I going to be playing for? And multiply it by five, and that will give you a minimum number of watts that you want on a speaker system. It's a very rough rule of thumb, but it'll get you a start. So for instance, if you can, can't see yourself ever playing to more than 50 people, uh, then you multiply that by five and you want a 250 watt uh, speaker system, RMS, uh, root mean squared, which basically means 250 watt constant, uh, not peak, uh, because a lot of cheaper PAs are sold by as loud as they can go in short burst, but you want something that'll be constant. So look for 250 watt RMS if you're after a small PA for 50 people, and then obviously move up from there. But that's only a tiny bit of it. You need reliable, you need something that's not going to um, cause you like issues with hum and buzz and connections and reliability and all that. Uh, and really, you get what you pay for. So I'm not going to advise what to buy on a budget. Uh, it's really something that you're going to have to, I would say, save money and buy something half decent if it were me. Because uh, you, buy, you buy once um, and you're going to be buying again next year if you buy something too cheap now. Um, so let's grab another question. Is it safe to assume the Prime Go is Phil's current favourite hardware? Shall we have a look at the Prime Go? For those of you that don't know what it is, it's out of my camera view over here, but I'll go grab it. This is the Prime Go. I've even turned it on for you. It's a little DJ controller that is actually pretty cool. What I'm going to do now is just push back the one I've got on there and bring this one in so I can show you it a little bit more closely. So the Prime Go is a self-contained metal solid DJ controller that is battery powered 
Oh, it's turning itself off now. The battery's flat. Uh, it's battery powered and it's got a built-in operating system. So you don't need to use it with a laptop. In fact, you can't use it with a laptop. It's just designed to work like this. Stick the, I told you we use deck saver cases for everything. Stick a deck saver case on it. That will tuck into pretty much any rucksack or DJ bag or boot of your car. And you've got something you can DJ on absolutely anywhere. If you combine this with uh, your phone, on a tripod with a little uh, audio interface to get the audio from here into the phone. You can then live stream from anywhere you want using just your phone uh, and a little portable tripod and a couple of leads. I, I like to use this with these little speakers, mini rigs, uh, which are so amazing. These sound so, so good for the money. Uh, they're really well made. These are a Bluetooth speaker, so you can use it with your phone just to listen to music, but you can also wire it in with the supplied cables battery powered again and this has no latency at all by the way when you wire it in uh, one of these or two of these if you're feeling posh one on each side or you can even add the base bin because they do a mini rig base bin as well but i tend to just go with one of them uh, will give you enough to play a dj set absolutely anywhere you want no computer in sight you use your phone to broadcast to the internet and you use one of these for the audio really fantastic little device oh, i'm not sure if it's my favorite device at the moment i don't really i'm a bit past having favorites but that said i've dj'd many many live streams on this from all over the place so it's certainly given me the most fun in the last two or three years for certain uh, the denon dj prime go running engine software yeah i do like it so you're not far from the truth there uh, right Show your YouTube award off, says Waylon. No one's ever asked that before. Oh, it was years ago we got this. Um, yeah, YouTube send out one of these when you get to a certain point in your, um, in your YouTube channel's uh, existence, when you get past 100,000 subscribers. I think we're at about nearly 300,000 now, but um, not bad, really, because we don't put an awful lot of... I mean, I'm, I'm being honest with you because you're my friends. We don't put an awful lot of uh, effort into YouTube, to be quite honest. We tend to stick to... Um, the you know the website and the and the email list and uh, and the courses and stuff. I'm just trying to put that up there. YouTube is a great thing. We love our YouTube channel, but it's not like our reason for existing or anything. So yeah, we're very proud of uh, very proud of the people following us on YouTube and watching us today. So thank you and do hit those likes and subscribes and remember to press the bell if you want more. Nah nah nah. Don't care about any of that stuff. If you like digital DJ tips, go there. DigitalDJTips.com/join. Get your free copy of the book. Get your free copy of the gear guide and get on the mailing list. That's where the real love and fun happens. Oh right, let's go grab another question. Um, this is uh, for. Or Colin talking about engine. Oh, wrong one. Uh, I'm an engine DJ user, but I'm playing on CDJs this weekend. Can I drag and drop my engine playlist into Recordbox, or do I have to create brand new ones within Recordbox? You have to create brand new ones within Recordbox, or you can use a utility uh, which our friend Mixmaster G has, which will let you convert from Denon library into Recordbox library. It's called the Denon Conversion Utility. So go Google that one. That uh, might be a quicker way of doing it. Um, so lots of you talking about Sonos. Um, wow, uh, that's uh, interesting. I've got a massive Sonos system at home. Terrible for DJing because you get a one or two second delay when you plug anything into it. But uh, Hey, nice to, nice to see you talking about Sonos. Um, I've learned loads from filling the website and I haven't paid a cent yet. There you go. You see, we know that if we give you enough value up front, there'll come a time when you want to buy a course and we're happy about that. Um, uh, so how do I put my music into Recordbox once the hard drive is connected? I put the song on my hard drive and loaded it onto Recordbox and I don't see the tracks. The tracks. Right, Recordbox is... Depending on whether you're using it to export music to USB and then go and play on a CDJ or an XDJ or whether you're using it as DJ software, it works slightly differently. If you're using Recordbox to prepare a DJ set for playing on like an XDJ or a CDJ 3000, you need to open the software, go to export mode. You need to import all the tunes into Recordbox, do what you want to do, and then use the export manager to put that onto the USB. You can't just drag tunes onto a USB drive. That would, they really won't work properly that way. If you're DJing with Recordbox, you need to import them into Recordbox. Now, it won't copy them. It will just say, OK, this person wants me to, uh, to be aware of all this music. And it'll have a look and say they're all on an external hard drive. Right, that, when he or she loads that track, that's where, that's where I'm going to go and look for it. Uh, and then that way you can use them in Recordbox. So 
you um, you can, I think, just drag and drop from from any source onto a deck in record box and it'll work. But that's the right way to do it. Uh, so uh, I hope that helps. If you've got any more queries about that, Colin, I see you've done well and uh, you've commented on Facebook for, with that comment. So uh, ask again on Facebook and, and either myself or the community or the team will get back to you there. Uh, this next live question, oh, you're very welcome, Sono Distorto. Uh, this next live question is from DJ C Mix. What's the best techniques to cut out tracks when mixing, like echoing out, for example? Uh, echo and reverb are the big ones. So if you have a like a half beat echo set, full, so you don't want it to just come on in the background, you want it to bang, take that track out. A half beat echo set on full, or a really big reverb, a massive room reverb, or a massive um, hall reverb, just something that's massive, that's just like really huge. They can be really good because they just keep the audio going when you've stopped the first deck playing and they give you a chance to wait a few seconds to start the next one. One little trick with echo is, and I can't show you because what we've got here isn't plugged in, but when you're triggering an echo, you see people think to echo a track out, let's say we've got a track playing, do t do t do t and you hit echo and you hit tch, 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 tch. right? You know what I mean? They think you should hit the echo and hit the stop button at the same time on the track, but that's wrong because if you do that, the echo turns on, but there's nothing for it to echo because you've stopped the track. So let's say you're trying to put a half beat echo to end a set, right? Or to end a track in order to mix another one in. Um, you're counting up to where you're going to end the track that's currently playing. And so imagine my left finger, that one there, it's going to trigger the echo, and my right finger is going to stop the track. So we'll be counting away one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one. Or two, two, three, four, one. In other words, this finger that's turning the echo on will turn it on a beat or half a beat before this one stops the track. In order that, the echo has got time to echo some actual playing music before you stop the track playing. Once you get the hang of that, triggering the echo, now then off, now then off. It's fine, or now, then off, if it's a long echo. Like if you're going to echo a beat, then you obviously have to turn the echo on a full beat before you turn the track off. If it's half a beat, half a beat before will be fine. And so once you've got that mastered, and once you've got the echo set to full wet or full on, so that you can't hear the track playing anymore, even if it were still playing, uh, you're going to get a really loud, clean echo to mix the next track into. Uh, let's grab some more live stuff. Um, this is from Craig. I want to hear one more balcony beats, says Craig. In fact, I've asked if we can see Phil doing a vinyl set. I've been promising to do a vinyl set for ages. After all, I do have all my vinyl up here. Oh, no. I've got about a hundredth of my vinyl that I used to own there. Um, maybe one day. Uh, I'm busy doing other stuff at the moment with every second of spare time I've got, but uh, maybe one day indeed. Balcony Beats was the sets that I used to play on the controller that we were showing you there. The, um, the Prime Go from all over the place. Used to play from halfway up mountains and lakes and all that kind of stuff. Had a lot of fun doing that stuff. Uh, maybe. Never say never. Um, so let me see what else we've got. Lots of stuff being asked here. Um, I just want to pick something that's maybe a little bit different to what we've uh, been talking about. Uh, this could be true, OK Ren. OK Ren says, I got my DDJ SB3 yesterday. Um, there's no life when I plug it into my MacBook Pro. Research suggests it won't work unless plugged directly into the laptop via a hub. Is this true uh, versus via a hub? Is this true in your experience? Yes. So let me give you my experience. Serato can be a little bit picky with recognizing DJ controllers that are plugged into it. Obviously, in this job, I get to plug a lot of DJ controllers into a lot of laptops, and I think Serato particularly quite often will not recognize the controller first time. And a couple of things you can do, you can, as you say, don't plug it into a, a powered hub. Instead, plug it directly into one of the USB sockets on your laptop, but also plug it into different USB sockets on your laptop. If it doesn't work on one and you've got two or four, try the other one or the others, because you might just find that one works better than the others. And another thing you should definitely try is a different USB lead, because a lot of the time it's because you've got a USB lead that's not very good or it's got a problem. So one of those things I'm pretty confident will 
sort out your issue there. Uh, the Ruckus is saying, uh, try using different echoes. It does change the impact of the effect. Yes, I didn't go into detail there because, of course, different software and different hardware has different echoes. But same with reverbs. Try lots of different ones in order to, uh, in order to uh, find the one that works for you. Um, Tony. Thank you for this comment, Tony. The money's in the post. Um, smash that like to get the word out for Phil, says Tony. Yes, smash the like, people. Sounds better coming from you than from me somehow, Tony. Um, please can you explain how to connect an iPad that has a USB-C to a turntable and mixers so I can use DJ Pro DVS? So I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to assume that the best way to do it would be to use a camera connection kit. This is a camera connection kit. Um, it's a little device that you plug your iPad into, your iPad or your iPhone into. You get a USB-C version of this. I'll just turn my torch on there. Yeah, and you then use a normal um, USB cable uh, to plug from here into the um, into the mixer or into the DJ controller that you want to control. I think that might work where plugging directly into the iPhone won't work or the iPad won't work. Um, I might be wrong, I haven't tried it yet myself, but I would say the camera connection kit would be a good starting point. Also, you get a charging point there as well. So you can keep your iDevice charged at the same time if you're plugging into something that can't charge it while, uh, while it's plugged into it. Uh, but it's, it's definitely easy to do, definitely easy to do and really cool. I mean, you can literally, and I can't wait to experiment with this. You could have Algorithms DJ Pro, which I've got on here. Uh, Algorithms DJ Pro running on your phone. Uh, and you can have all your music library on here, or all, all the set that you want to play uh, on this app. Um, and you can then put this, balance this, literally, on the back of your mixer. So you can have your mixer there. And have your phone there like that and your decks on either side, and there's your waveforms, and there's your library, all ready for you to use with just your phone. So you could, no need to have a laptop, no need to even have an iPad, any, any modern uh, iPhone, at least, I'm not sure about Android, um, probably not, because I think they've only just released it for iOS, um, will do it. How cool is that? I can't wait to get it set up on mine. Um, so yeah, it's possible, maybe the camera connection kit will help you, but I can't give you uh, I can't give you the truth about that uh, definitively because I haven't had time to uh, sort it out. Uh, Matt, do you have any courses that explain how to configure passive amps, what kind of uh, passive sound systems, what kind of amps to pair with what speakers and so on? No, we don't. Something we've always said we'll do in our really technical course, but we don't have one yet to help with that. Uh, a thumbs up from... Uh, um, Nexu for the Mini Rig 3 speakers, totally great, totally worth the money. I completely agree with you. I think they are fantastic speakers. Um, so uh, what about Lexicon DJ? Uh, I'm waiting for your review. Well, you have to wait a little bit longer, but we have got a review coming of Lexicon DJ. It's a really good, I'll show you Lexicon DJ. It's a really good system uh, for organizing your DJ library, library. Um, so that you can use it on all kinds of DJ software, and also so that you can um, get your library in kind of good order uh, away from your DJ software. So it's a bit like a kind of DJ version of iTunes. It's got a load of stuff on it which you don't get on either iTunes or DJ software. Um, so you could like get rid of duplicates and you can um, look up stuff, store your whole library in the cloud uh, and do all this kind of like really cool stuff uh, for a monthly subscription, of course. None of these, none of these things are free. Uh, and then once you've done all that stuff, you can click a button and it will push everything you've done into all the major DJ software platforms. So on paper, it's a really good idea. Uh, as I say, we've not had a time, time to look properly at it. It is coming our uh, review of Lexicon, but it certainly looks promising. Um, can you do a demo on how to use the sampler on a two-channel controller, but you actually playing three songs at one time, one sample and two songs? Uh, maybe, yeah, but it's not hard. You get two songs playing and then you trigger a sample. You can even put whole samples into, uh, sorry, whole songs into sample slots. So one nice thing that I've seen DJs do when they're playing with two um, decks, like on a small DJ controller, like, like the, the, the Rev 1 we've got there, uh, is they will um, sample the playing song into a sample slot, 
switch over to the sample they just made, um, seamlessly of course, so that you think you're still listening to the song, and then take that song off the deck, and then you've got the deck free to mix something else in. It can be good fun when you're messing around with acapellas and stuff. Uh, we do cover the sampler in some of our more advanced mixing courses, like mixing power skills and so on. Uh, and if you want to see uh, more creative sampler uses, uh, Angelo's got some in his mixing course as well, DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. Again, from, from us here at Digital DJ Tips. Indeed, let me show you, if you're new to Digital DJ Tips, how you can get to our courses. Now, you go to digitaldjtips.com, the, the website, and at the top, click on DJ Courses. That'll take you to the home page of the DJ courses. And here you'll see the complete courses. These are the big ones. These are the ones that will teach you to be a DJ, a scratch DJ, a producer, or a mobile DJ. And then the mixing courses, and there's so much here. So there's the Angelo course that I was telling you about uh, here, uh, where we, he, he doesn't only use the sample, he uses all kinds of stuff to, uh, to really, really mix it up. Uh, but there's also uh, mixing power skills is a very, very popular course. Probably the best one to start with if you are new to uh, what we call power mixing, you know, beyond beat mixing kind of stuff. Um, but there's loads of courses there. Not only that, there's software courses, hardware courses, production courses, deep dives into things like mixtapes and live streaming, and the Digital DJ Labs Lab Training Program, which is our pinnacle of DJ training, which is something that uh, you'll know when you're ready for Digital DJ Lab. Uh, when you think you are, come and have a look. We'd love to show you more about it. So we are here into our last 10 minutes, and uh, I'm, I'm on the roll now with this stuff. Go on, hit the likes. Hit the likes, people. Not something that uh, I'm used to saying, but uh, seeing a lot of you are urging me on to do so, I will. Um, so this is great from James, pointing out that you can make a breakdown in the middle of your track if you want, just by using the echo, the half beat echo that's off beat. Uh, and yes, indeed you can. It's a good way of doing so. Um, I'm not going to answer to the person who is cut and pasting their question as I warned. Ask once. Please don't do it, people. It's rude. Uh, so uh, let's get one or two more questions then to kind of end off today. Benny, I almost missed this live session. Gee, it's a good idea for me to point out. You can watch the replays, of course. They're the replay uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. So let me uh, see what else we haven't answered that's a little bit different. Oh, OK, Ren, we actually did answer your question, even though you cut and pasted it over and over and over again. Don't do it. Come on. It's not only you on this call. Um, so uh, something a bit different. I'm just looking for something a little bit different to carry on. Uh, because th we tend to get the same kind of questions over and over again, and I do like to mix it up a bit. Lots of you talking about touch screens. You know what? I find nowadays that I'm so used to using stuff on my phone and my iPad that when I switch over to the laptop, I actually find myself touching the laptop screen. And I actually find myself quite jealous of Windows Surface users who are touching the laptop screen as well as using the keyboard. I think it's time Apple introduced a touchscreen laptop, don't you? I know you'll say, oh, they've got the iPad with a keyboard added. But it seems to me nowadays to be a pretty artificial thing to not have touchscreen on any laptop. Um, what do you think? Should Apple have touchscreen laptops? Let me know in the comments. Um, so let me answer a question about mixed in key. You've not had a question about mixed in key for a while. Is mixed in key any good? Is it better than the key system that's already built into Serato or Virtual DJ? So mixed in key is a great piece of software. Um, it is a pretty advanced piece of mixing, of key mixing software that most people don't need. Mixed in key has got the most accurate key detection out there. It's got the ability to spot more than one key in a song. It's got a keyboard, so if you're musically inclined and you're not sure about how it's guessed a key, you can literally play chords over your song and figure it out. Uh, it's got built-in tag organizers. It's got built-in cue points. It'll do automatic cue points for you. I don't recommend that, but it has. It's got, it can do automatic energy levels for you. Is it worth using it instead of DJ software? Because all DJ software has got key mixing built in. No. 
I honestly don't think it is nowadays. I think you're just as well off, and for simplicity, it's probably better to just use the key detection in your DJ software. The most important thing, in my view, is to only use one key detection system. You start to hit problems where you're analyzing some stuff on mixed in key, some stuff that comes in with the key already there so you don't touch it, and other stuff on your software, and then you've got stuff from when you use different DJ software in the past, etc., etc., etc. Just bulk analyze everything with the same software, and then you're going to get results that work well together, which is the important thing with key mixing. You do want it to work well together. Um, so as long as you do that, I don't think you need mixed in key. Mixed in key is great. I love it. Uh, I've used it forever, but nah. It's not, not, not necessary nowadays. Um, Layback Luke is using his phone for pro DJ sets nowadays. He is indeed well pointed out. Positive T will be covering that at some point soon. Uh, lots of thumbs up for the little mini rig speakers I was showing off uh, a minute ag ago. I don't think you can adjust the jog wheels for mixed stream pro with virtual DJ. You might be able to do it in the virtual DJ software, but you certainly can't do it on the hardware. Uh, to answer that question. Bobby says, which DJ is better, the one that keeps it simple or the one that makes it complicated? It's the one that keeps the dance floor happy. Um, and, you know, the complicated tricks are great, but you've got to know why you're doing them. So if you're complicating it for no reason, the DJ that keeps it simple is better. But the DJ that knows when to go for it and knows when to hold back is the best DJ of all. <clears throat> Jazzy Jeff. Just saying. Um, so... Uh, Hi, Phil. I just got home, says Sarah. Uh, good to catch you. My 20-year-old Stantons have finally given up the ghost. I have the budget for brand new Technics Mark 7s, or should I pay for Mark 2s and a service on them? Thank you. Uh, right, I can only give you my opinion on this. I don't like the Mark 7s. I think they're too lightweight and they're overpriced. They are very, very technically wonderful turntables. So if you're not going to be taking them into really loud clubs where you need something that's heavy to withstand vibrations, then they're probably a brilliant buy, Sarah, and I'd go for it. But I just think they've missed. I think it's a miss, miss cue, personally. Um, I also wouldn't massively recommend buying Mark IIs and having them um, serviced. Um, Mark IIs are great, but they're very, very old now. Um, if it were me, if you gave me money and said, go and buy turntables now, I would buy a pair of Reloop RP7000s. I just think they're the best bang for the buck, so they say. They're a wonderful turntable, uh, and I would buy RP7000s from Reloop. Um, so, but you won't go wrong with the M Mark 7s. Just be aware that they're a lot lighter weight than the Technics Mark 2s, and I think that's a massive disadvantage. Um, would the Rev 1, the controller we've got here, uh, be a good complement to my large Denon controller for when I need multiple setups or when I don't need my big Denon controller? No, because I think if you're going to have a secondary controller, it should run on the same system that your primary controller runs on. So if you're using your Denon DJ Prime, I'm guessing you've got a Prime 4, uh, with Serato, then get a smaller Serato controller, fine. Get a Rev1, whatever. But if you are using, uh, like, say, Engine DJ on your big controller, it depends why you want a backup controller, really. Um, if it were me, I'd probably go for the little Prime, Prime Go that I've got there as a backup. Um, so uh, Positive T is loving power mixing. Yeah, it does very well, that power mixing course. TurboTech, is Phase DJ worth buying? Yep, if you want it, it works very well. Uh, I've got no issues with Phase DJ. Uh, we've got a new review of that coming. Um, I think the processor on my Traxxer S8 is failing. Will it be expensive to repair? Well, I've no idea. Depends what is actually going wrong. Um, I think it probably would be quite expensive to repair, Kevin, but take it to a dealer and find out what's wrong with it first if it, and without jumping to conclusions, I would say. Um, I have a latency issue with headphones. Can I adjust that in Rekordbox? You can adjust the latency in Rekordbox of the whole software, but that'll affect everything. Uh, so yes, you can, uh, but it's not your headphones that are the problem there. Assuming they're wired headphones, it isn't the headphones that are the problem there. Uh, it's something else. Um, so vice versa, says John, has proven to be the very best utility software I've ever purchased. Uh, and you know what? I've got no idea what you're talking about. What is this vice versa software? It rings a bell, but I can't remember what it is. Shall we go and look at it together? See, I like doing this stuff. I like going and looking at stuff together. I've got to find it, of course. Vice versa utility. Maybe in the meantime, someone can tell me what it does. It might be shorter, but... Uh, 
to do that. But uh, vice versa, file, oh, I know what it is. Yeah, I remember now. We've talked about this before, haven't we? Uh, it's file, synchron file synchronization, file replication, backup, and comparison software. Uh, it is for geeks who want to keep multiple copies of things, maybe on hard drives, maybe across networks, maybe even across computers, uh, nicely uh, in sync, and obviously using it for DJ libraries. I wouldn't certainly wouldn't respect, wouldn't... Uh, uh, encourage anyone to do that who's not uh, completely pr pr um, proficient in the way their DJ uh, laptop works and the way the operating system underneath it all works. But yep, I can see that does look like a nice piece of software indeed. Um, right, we're done. People, I would love to talk to you for another hour, but I do have to go. Uh, I have got lessons to type up and then I've got to get home. And it's 5 p.m. here, which is certainly late enough to be working on a hot summer's evening. Uh, thank you very much. We'll be back here at the same time next week for the final, the final Q&A Live until September because we're taking our summer two-month break. So uh, do come next week. We'll have a bit of a party. You don't have to wear your uniform. You can bring games. Uh, and then we are also back next Tuesday for our Tuesday Tips Live. People, it's been wonderful. Um, I'm now encouraged to do this every time, so I will. You don't know what you've started here. Um, please hit that like button uh, if you've enjoyed this. Share the love uh, and also do subscribe to Digital DJ Tips. If you haven't already, we'd love to have you as our latest member. You get on the news list, which is the really important thing. And to do so, you go there. I need to get a shortcut up here for that so I don't have to keep going like this, don't I? DigitalDigitalTips.com slash join. Come join us. Till next time, get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you on another one of these very soon. Bye-bye for now.